when you say that that you know everyone kind of knows the game theory for sex what what is that for those reasons that it's asymmetrical and and why why is that um well, let me present it this way i i think i think this is the most reasonable logical way to see it women have one reproductive strategy right the intensity of the relationship between mother and offspring and the fact that short of hiring wet nurses and people to raise your children even a woman who's in a position to do that is still obligated to nine months of sharing a body you know with an offspring yeah so the intensity of that relationship right nine months of gestation plus however many years of lactation plus all of the helplessness that basically <laughs> obligates mothers to continue to invest in their offspring. That is a gigantic expense, right? Yeah, in evolutionary crazy. fitness terms, the investment that goes into one offspring is through the roof. Yeah. Okay. So that's why women have one strategy and that strategy involves you produce an offspring, you invest heavily in it to get it to mm -hmm. reproductive age. Mm -hmm. Men have two broad categories. Okay. There's one category in which they do exactly what I've just described, or not exactly, but almost exactly. They invest completely in their offspring, right? Because yeah. that's what makes those offspring likely to reach reproductive age. Now, when men are in that mindset where they're investing completely in their offspring, they are not the same as women. They have different concerns. They fear sexual infidelity of their spouses more because they have more to lose, et cetera. But they are very similar to women, right? They are similarly choosy, similarly committed, right? All the best things about men are connected to that strategy where they are heavily invested in their offspring and their offspring's well-being and their offspring's protection, et cetera. Right. But men have another strategy, and that involves producing offspring for which they take no responsibility. Right. Now, if you compare the cost of strategy one, total investment in your offspring so that they reach reproductive age, I mean, what does it cost a man to raise a child, right? It's 18 years of being thoroughly dedicated, right? Yeah. Compare that to, I don't know, 15 minutes of commitment and then, you know, walking away. Yeah. 15 minutes of commitment and walking away is a huge bargain. Yeah. And the point is, this is the bitter pill of all of this. When a man is sexually attracted to a woman in a way that does not, in his mind, include the potential for a commitment to her, right? It's one thing to be madly, passionately in love with somebody and want to go to bed with them. It's another thing to want to go to bed with them and not want to see them the next day. That right. is a very, I mean, imagine just as an abstract uh, situation, a man sees a woman, he finds her very attractive. He wants to go to bed with her, but he's not really interested in the relationship. Let's say for whatever reason, she says yes. And let's say that a baby is the result. She's stuck. Okay. Yeah. She effectively has to make that same investment that she would make, even if this person had committed to her. Right. And she has no help now. So it's even bigger. She now has to cover for him because he vanished. He just got a similar level of payoff evolutionarily as if he had committed to this woman to produce this offspring and raise it together for effectively no investment at all. Right. So that bargain is so profound that even though it would have been rare in the past for any woman to allow a man to go to bed with her without evidence of commitment, right? The point is men are on the lookout for that opportunity because the bargain is so big. Right. Now here's the right. problem. Now introduce birth control into the situation. Women start behaving differently. So sex without commitment becomes increasingly common. Now men right. can't think of anything else. 
Why would you commit in a world where there's nothing but evolutionary bargains everywhere? That's how they feel. Right. Whether they know they feel that way or not. <laughs> right. And the problem is that a world in which people spend time where men are, they feel like they're Genghis Khan, right? Having sex mm -hmm. with all of these women and not being expected to commit to them, right? And women think women are not even wrong they're they're correct that they have to behave this way in order to get the attention of men because men are so distracted by these you know delightful opportunities that expect nothing of them yeah and the point is it's it's a clusterfuck it just no it is it is like i i mean i i said this in my video where i read it because i read the piece and put it on youtube because so many people were putting, it's amazing like what gets put on something like this as everyone starts projecting their own, like the men's rights activists entered the chat. And the, um, yeah, I mean, it's not fun. You know, it's, it's, I knew that that would happen when I put it out there, but it's, it's inevitably a lot of people start putting things like, oh, she's almost there. You know, maybe if you understand like this is all about God and you have marriage and <laughs> you're, like there's there's been a lot but one of the things that i talked about in discussing this was that i know more good women like brilliant amazing women who know that they can't have sex just like a man they can't just have meaningless sex they know that about themselves and they are not even competing in the dating market because they can't and these are the best women like the best women, nurturing, loving, intelligent, like the the best women that I know. And they're sitting on the sidelines single because it's how do you even go on Tinder or compete? And people will say, well, they should go look for, um, you know, somebody like on match or somewhere like that. Or it's, it's not impossible, but I just think it, it does. Like you said, it's a clusterfuck there's, and then you have this whole population of men who are ultimately angry because they feel like the kind of top 20% are getting all of the women, which is in fact, probably true. And I don't know what to do about that either, because my instinct is like, well, man up and and like stop whining about it <laughs> just but i'm i'm not i don't really know i feel like there's when there's a very angry population of men in a lot of different countries in the world right now that feel like they got the shaft um this is absolutely right and they're they're you know they're not even wrong and right. that anger weirdly isn't at other men. It's a, it often gets directed at women. Right. Which th this is why, uh, I, I call myself an equal opportunity slut shamer, right? My feeling <laughs> is this, you know, the problem with slut shaming is that it's asymmetrical, right? Yeah. But the point is, look, you've got a society that is behaving in a slutty way that's bad yeah. for everybody. Yeah, right? it's bad for everyone. It's bad for everyone. And yeah. the solution, unfortunately, look, I, I have talked to, back when I was a college professor, this came up a lot. And I talked to a lot of young women who were despairing of exactly this puzzle, right? You've got two choices. You can either um, ante up and basically get male attention but not be able to keep it because the men are distracted and effectively adolescent, mm -hmm. right? Or you can opt out and be alone, right? Neither yeah. of those is good choices. So I do think there is an answer to this puzzle, but it's not an answer that an individual woman can avail herself of, right? The answer involves the recognition that this system not only is it bad for everybody, but it's not making anybody happy, mm -hmm. right? Sex is easier to come by than it has ever been. But mm -hmm. sexual satisfaction is actually now a rare commodity, right? Yeah. Right. You've basically got a bunch of addicts who are getting a fix, but it's a very low quality fix. Yeah. So the solution involves the recognition, hey, 
if I go down that road, then I'm not going to be happy. And what I would like to do is opt into a community of people that agrees together not to go down that road. Right. right? Now, I think that actually, not only is that the right game theoretic solution to the puzzle, but it's also uh, self-catalyzing because to the extent that people know that they're unhappy and there's some community of people that has agreed to make rules that are sensible and those people begin to experience a much greater level of satisfaction because um, they you know, are basically opting out together, then the point is that's the community you want to be in. Right? right. So I think it would spread like wildfire if it caught on. And the real question is, you know, what exactly are the rules that you would want to post at the door that would, <laughs> uh, you know, cause people to behave in a way that yes, would mean that they got laid a lot less often, uh, at least until they were attached, but, um, that would make those instances vastly more pleasurable and meaningful and would result in the production of relationships that were on a solid foundation. 